Hello, I hope all is going well for you in the course so far. We're at the point now where we're gonna do the first learn by doing activity. So this video is designed to, to guide you through the process to help you learn how to use some of the tools and to get you thinking on a line uh, within a context of solving a problem, a pretty big problem. But if we can get the solution, the big solution, can really, as we're going to see, the mathematics can really empower the application of the solution. So let's join together and take a look at what we can, where we can find this activity. So this is our Canvas course. And um, you'll see here, what we're now into is we've gotten through the first uh, major things. I think we'll be about week three, week two or three. So in unit three anyway, we've been looking at various functions. We've just done rational functions and you're gonna see this uh, problem set starts off with uh, what we've learned in a way to learn it maybe a little deeper and then it's going to connect with the next unit, which is exponential functions. So a little bit of activities that help um, give us what's needed to understand the next set. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up here the assignment. So you'll need to download one of these. I have a PDF version and a Word version. The one I'm gonna show you is, I'm gonna use the Word version because uh, Word has the feature to be able to actually draw in the, um, in the document and then you're going to be able to save it and upload it as a so save it as a pdf um, because that's what the assignment will accept okay so this is the first part here uh, and let's see we'll go to our word document let's see we'll go to the top so this is what you should see in our activity problem set one explorations learned by doing so the first step is to graph this function uh, you can use a handheld graphing calculator if you're familiar with that uh, my suggestion is use desmos because it has some nice features so uh, i'm going to show you what i've already started here in desmos so we'll come over to the desmos calculator uh, i've actually already entered it in and I wanted to see uh, to show you when you're doing rational functions it's important to have uh, the numerator in a parentheses and then when you do divide then it Desmos goes ahead and gives you all the denominator so this is what you'll you'll see and the goal is is that you go back to the form and, and sketch this uh, now you can use again the draw tools let me back up a little bit so now that we see this I can actually come up here if you click on draw, you can pull up a pin, any color you want. Um, we'll stick with the red, or I guess this red, whatever. And you could either do it with your mouse, or if you've got a stylus, you can, you know, draw what we're seeing here. And this is not a really good one, but uh, you'll do better, I'm sure. Uh, maybe by plotting the points first, but. I just want to show you, you can draw, you can, you know, label some points here. Uh, and, and it is a Word document, so you can also insert uh, text boxes on top of this, uh, this drawing here. You know, so if you want to do something like that, let's see if it'll work. Well, I can draw. Anyway, uh, play with it a bit. You could also print this out and just do it by hand uh, is another nice way. The goal though is once we are done with our drawing is uh, to put in some horizontal line or vertical lines and horizontal lines. Uh, what are they? And then also to graph this function here, uh, which you'll see is hopefully very similar and uh, that maybe in factored form, it gives us some information of what we need to do. Um, there is then the next part of this activity is to take an information about another function. 
see if you can reconstruct the graph just from this information and then from having that information can you come up with what the function actually is in factored form test it out on Desmos and see if it works uh, and just to show you uh, Desmos can even graph where am I here we are we'll come back here Desmos can actually graph in vertical lines so you can actually put in here x equals negative 1 like they ask and then uh, if you click and hold you can change the color let's make it green so it's different and you can make it dashed so we start to see we can actually draw these in um, you could do the same thing it asks for you x equals 5 um, it's green but we want it dashed so I click and click and hold and it takes a little getting used to but we can do this and then we want a horizontal line which is going to be y equals uh, 0.5 I think it is yeah and again we got a new color but again you can make them all green or whatever color you want get creative um, and so that's it, it gives us a chance to put these in there and, and kind of see okay uh, learn by doing but it's important to actually do this what I'm, I'm guiding you and showing you don't say oh I see this here a little crow put it up for us great I don't need to do this but the idea behind this is based on extensive research uh, of how people learn how the brain works when we see something a, a part of the brain is working on what we see when we write something part of the brain is working on making our hands coordinate what's going on another part of the brain if we talk to ourselves like I often do when I'm solving problems we are using our vocal cords that's another part of the brain we are also hearing ourselves talk that's another part of the brain and the brain itself is sort of metacognitively creating all this that's another part of the brain we have activated a large portion of the brain we have created an experience that deepens the learning stores it in a place where we have ready access to it so that's the idea behind uh, this activity the next part let's see I think I can go ahead uh, if we go down is, is a pay it forward and let me uh, go ahead and start this PowerPoint from the beginning um, and we're going to explore the astonishing power of exponential growth uh, and how paying forward our compassion can really change our world now I'll just put aside on this this whole activity I developed when I was on sabbatical in in Thailand and I was looking for a school that I could employ some of my innovations in and uh, I was contacted by a recruiter there was a school in Kazakhstan so this actually is an activity I put together for my interview um, to work at a school uh, a national school in, in Kazakhstan teaching uh, talented and gifted students uh, we were teaching them 11th grade math as they were in 10th grade uh, I got the job so I guess it was a good presentation hopefully you'll find it so the other part this comes from is when I was teaching at Oregon State I, one of the activities they had for exponential growth was that prison populations were doubling you know, that's kind of a negative thing and I I've seen in many textbooks um, this they come to exponential growth and it, it involves crime rates prisons growing 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 and, and maybe that's what's happening in our world but I thought as you'll see this one this is developed that just as exponential growth can create havoc in our world if we just turn it around it can also undo the the negative effects of years of neglect and we can create a society that can really change the world in a positive way so that's what this is all about so um, we see exponential growth uh, again you'll see some of this in the content that you're going to look at but it's different than 
uh, linear growth, which is really an additive growth. So you keep adding the same amount. Uh, exponential growth, you get this doubling effect um, because it is a relative or a percentage change. Exponential is percentage change, whereas linear growth is an additive change or subtractive if we're going down. But uh, additive change, linear, we get growth. Exponential growth um, based on a percentage. So remember that part for when you get into there. A couple things, as we spoke in the, the graph, you could see that when we have exponential growth, the time period it takes to double remains the same. So if it doubles, it doubles, it doubles in the same amount of time. Uh, also with exponential growth, one of the things that happens is it grows so quickly, uh, depending upon what it is, it can use up the resources very quickly and, and is not able to continue. In our example, that's gonna be a good thing because once everybody's been helped in the world, we've got a beautiful place already. So um, take a look at how that works. So let's just pay it forward, a worksheet. I'm gonna help walk you through, guide you through this, this part here in coming up with the formulas so that you can answer the questions that are on the following page. And it's those questions I want you to think about the effect of exponential growth. So first we have a sh relatively short video clip uh, explaining the idea. Some of you may have seen this movie, Pay It Forward. It's one of my favorites. It really touches the heart. Uh, and a young child, Trevor, is going to give us this idea. So let's go ahead and take a look. is just a big disappointment. Unless you take the things that you don't like about this world and you flip them upside down and you can start that today. That's me and that's three people and I'm going to help them. Then they do it for three other people. Then they do it for three more. But it has to be something really big, something they can't do by themselves. Lost your car? That's a keen observation. I can help you. You're giving me a brand new Jaguar and you don't want anything? Call it generosity between two strangers. What did you tell my son to make him bring a homeless man into my house? I've got a story, okay? Senior partner Candy and Moss is giving away new cars. Just pay it forward. This is the one. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. It's like this idea. Please. You stay right there. What are you doing on my truck? Let me show you. I'm just... I'm just gonna open the door, okay? See, might be easier for you to sell now. Now that it works. I didn't ask for your help. No. What is going on with you and my son? He wanted to help somebody. He wanted to get somebody back on their feet, so he gave me a little money. He gave you money? Yes, ma'am. That's his savings. Uh, well, it's clothes and shoes, and I got the job off it. You think you can keep it? Somebody comes along like your son gives me a leg up. I'll take it. Even from a kid, I'll take it. Look, I appreciate what you're trying to do, paying back Trevor. I'm not allowed to pay back Trevor. 
Then what is it you're doing? I'm paying it forward. What's paying it forward? That's me. And that's three people. And I'm going to help them. But it has to be something really big. Something they can't do by themselves. So I do it for them. Then they do it for three other people. That's nine. And I do three more. That's 27, so I, I'm not really good at math, but it gets big really fast, you know? please? Yes. I think it's a good idea. Sean? It's stupid. Adam? It's the honor system. People blow off the honor system. So what? Just because you do. <laughs> well, Trevor, the class seems to think that you've come up with an overly utopian idea. Look that word up in a minute. Like a perfect world? Mm-hmm. There are three big favors for three people, and then three people, those three people have to pay it forward to three other people. They can't pay it back. They're not allowed to. It's almost like a chain, and, it's, and you start off with the type of one person, eventually you get to millions and millions, and eventually billions of people all helping each other. I've done the math of pay it forward, and it's a, it's a pretty neat idea. Pay it forward, the, the movement, it's reached L.A., Mrs. McKinney. On the movement. Any moment that you open your heart to somebody, then it's then the idea works. And the moment you shut your heart down in some way, then it dies. It's that fragile a thing. And that's why I paid for in all those places. Because my mom. Because she was so brave. It's a nice thought of people being able to do this. I mean, if everybody takes and does their part, I mean, the world will be helped. If everybody did pay it forward. My God, maybe things would be a little different. I don't know, I think some people are too scared or something. I think things can be different. I guess it's hard for some people who are so used to things the way they are, even if they're bad, to change. And they kind of give up. When they do, everybody kind of... They kind of lose. I don't want to be one of those people he's talking about. When I become one. It's going to be different for every person, you know. People have different reactions to things. Uh, sometimes it's enough if you just take care of your own family. It's a, it's a huge prospect, but but with Pay It Forward, it's, it's not so impossible. Would you do it? Because <laughs> I can say yes or no, but it doesn't matter, because if you won't do it, then it doesn't... Then it, well, then, then I don't know either. I'm trying to figure out what to do. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. okay, so what did you think? We got the idea. What we're going to do is just as Trevor did, we're going to do the math. And we're going to see if the math will make this work. And then we're going to see, well, if the math works, what about humans? What can we do to make them work, the idea? Uh, so if one of the things you have to decide on is how long does each person get to complete the three good deeds? Um, is it one day, one week, one month? Um, I think maybe in the movie you could see Trevor, it's maybe over a period of a month, but maybe it was a week. It's, it's not really clear, but um, we'll sort of standardize this so that we can analyze it. How long would it take to have so many people? Um, and we, we call that a round. So everybody does a round they complete the help the next three people in a particular period of time. Um, okay, and we can start doing this. So whether you think it can be done in a week or whether you think it takes a month, if it takes a year, whatever it is, you'll see it doesn't really matter. We can have an impact on our world in a, in a relatively short period of time. A lot of students do this in either weekly or monthly. Um, maybe monthly would be good. Anyway, so let's, let's talk about this. Uh, first, it starts with one person having something that changed them for the better, uh, organically, it happened. And then you decide to go help three other people. So at the end of the first round, again, whether it's the first week or first month, 
a total of four people have been helped. Three new people, you, plus your three people you helped, that's four. And then those three people, they go on to help three more. So three times three is nine. And then we add in the four, and now 13 people have been helped. Next round, those nine people help three more. Three times nine is 27. And then 27 plus 13, 40 people have been helped. So at this time, if you could pause the video. Welcome back. So hopefully you've completed the table now and it should look something like this. So as we go through, after seven rounds of help, uh, 2,187 new were helped for a total of 3,280 people, which, you know, you compare that to the world is, is not a large amount, but those are all the people around us, right? Because we started it. And so it's gone out from there. And what we wanna do is now be able to jump out. What about after 20 rounds? What about after 30 rounds? How long will it take to, to help each set, well, the world, the, the state, whatever we wanna help, right? Um, so we look at the pattern the mathematics tells us that we just keep multiplying by three. So that's the exponential here. Uh, however many rounds have happened, we just take that three to that power. So three to the seventh was 2,187. That's great. But so it would tell us how many new people were helped in the 20th round, but it's not gonna help us with the total number of people because that's a summative thing. So to get there, we'd have to do line by line all the way to 20, which we could do maybe using Microsoft Excel or something, but we can also come up with a formula here by seeing patterns within the numbers. Uh, what I'm gonna ask you to look at here, and if you want to pause it and take a deeper look, you can do that, but watch. These two numbers, when you look at that, that kind of spikes out that, oh, 40 is about half of 81, right? And Because we're going to add for 81 and 40 to get the 121. We can see that I got the 81. How did we get that? We took 3, raised it to the fourth power. That gives us 81. So now we're starting to get that formula. And how could we get the 40? Well, if you've got the 81, you subtract 1 from it. So 3 to the fourth minus 1 and then divide it by two, that will give us our 40. And so then we take 81 plus the 40, we get the 121. Now, will that work for each of these steps? Give it a try. You'll see that you can do this. Three to the seventh gives us this. So three to the seventh minus one divided by two gives us actually the previous amount. And so that helps us come up with this formula, three to the n, the new people being helped, plus the total help sort of in a summative form from the previous level. Now we have a formula where we can go to the 20th round, plug in 20, and we'll see exactly how many people were helped in that setting. That allows us to come answer the rest of these questions that are in the worksheet. And finally, to see how long, how many rounds it will take to help the 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. Uh, now these figures are a couple years old, few years old. Uh, you might want to update those if you want. Um, Google world population, see exactly how many are changing. Okay, so what we've done is we've worked through this. We see the math works. I think it's uh, however you want to look at it. You know, it's a couple years. Um, it's certainly within our lifetime, even if it took a whole year to do these good deeds. Uh, but it's, it's a short period of time, relatively speaking. But our conditions today don't see this happening. So what do we need to make it happen? So after doing this, my ex or hope for you is that uh, we don't, you know, Trevor said the problem is, is that people, when things are bad, they just give up. But I don't think you're that kind of people. I think you're the kind of people that keep going. Because what? In these bad times, you're buying out the time to go to school, to educate yourself, to have a new way of bringing your talents into the world and changing things. That's the kind of spirit we need. And so an extension excitement. You don't have to turn this one in, but think about it. Get together with some 
other innovators, brainstorm what are the characteristics, what are the human characteristics of, that are causing this to fail, what, that bring us to where we are today. And then what are the human characteristics that could make this plan succeed? And then how can we develop a plan that harnesses the power for good and abates the negative things that are causing it to fail? That's the key. The mathematics will work. We see it. We've done it. We just got to get the human characteristics using the parts that are going to lean toward success. I thank you for engaging in this activity. Hopefully it's been beneficial. Hopefully you've experienced how engaging more of your senses in the learning process can help you bring things from the past that you've sort of already learned, but learned at a deeper level to make it your own. And then also to empower you as you go into a new uh, set of topics, having this experience of getting a context <clears throat> and being empowered by uh, hopefully an exciting project of making our world a better place. Uh, so that's our first activity. We'll have some more of these uh, throughout the course as we get into trigonometry as well. Um, learn by doing is a powerful way to learn and retain so that we can use our talents and skills to touch our world in a positive way, make it better for us, those around us, and those on the other side of the world that we haven't even met.